I'm Frank. I like to do it myself. Today I have a 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLE 350 and the windshield washers aren't working. So let me show you first. Here's the button. Going to sit right in there. Now you should be able to hear the motor turning. So one of the things that can cause this not to work is a bad uh, wiper uh, pump motor. But the pump motor is working, but I'm still not getting anything out. I'll show you where some of the stuff is. So you can get a little idea. Uh, let me tell you first, if you have the hood open, the windshield washers will not work. There's a disconnect in there so that if this is open and you try checking everything out, it's not going to work. So there are four nozzles. Here's the hose that goes to those nozzles. Now, for whatever reason, you have to undo these. These windshield wiper blades, the whole arm needs to come off first. But here's the hose coming down. Here, this one goes to the back, to the rear window, and then this one to the front. Here's where the fill is, and the rest of the stuff is right under here. So in order to get to it, you have to take the wheel off and then get uh, access through the bottom, through the uh, uh, wheel well. So you're going to need a jack, some jack stands, a um, 17 millimeter wrench to get the lug nuts off the tires. This should be in your uh, jack kit in the trunk of the car. Uh, you're going to want that. A screwdriver, an eight millimeter socket. Now you can use a regular wrench. I usually use, use a regular drill that I can put this attachment on. And that just makes things go a lot quicker and easier. So I'm ready to get started. Before you get too far, put this pin in. Well, what is that pin? This will, when all the lug nuts are off, this tire will just fall right off. Or you'll have to kick it off if it's frozen. But this keeps the tire in. You can see how it just loosened up. This will help you get the tire back on as well. I'm going to put the tire under the car. Because if my jack gives way and my jack stand gives way, I don't want to be underneath here and get crushed. I would much rather pay for a new rim than a new body. So, right under here is where the uh, windshield washer is. So with a screwdriver, I'm just going to loosen this. These attachments just push in and spread to keep that in place. There's another one right up here. These two undone, and there are four eight millimeter screws down here underneath. See if you can get up underneath there. There's one, two, three, and four. Alright, 
take. And I'm just going to move this away. I'll take it behind the rotor. And right in here is where the reservoir is. And this right here is the pump. So I'm going to lift it up right here. There's the pump. You can see some water is dripping out. Now, I'm going to get a bucket. Can you see this little grommet right here? Which little grommet? Right there. Hang on one second. Yeah, I can see it. All right. That's what I'm going to pull out. And now water's going like crazy. Now, well, that's draining. Look at the end of this. That's what fogged up the uh, windshield washer system. So, what does this come from? Typically, using standard automotive um, washer fluid. Because, in addition to water, there are other solvents in there, and these other solvents will tend to separate out and clog this filter up. By the time you hit your windshield washer fluid, gets on the windshield, and then um, and then your wiper starts going. That solvent really hasn't had a chance to, to work or do anything anyway. So um, if you if we're able to get this, you can see the blue coming out. That was the standard automotive um, washer uh, fluid. I'm going to be using regular water from now on uh, so that this won't clog up. So I'm just going to clean this. Looks good. I'm just going to check it under a faucet. So this is now clean. Same one that I took out. If you want to double check, just blow in the end. Everything comes out freely. I'm just going to put this back where it came from. It's in. Fully seated. My pump. There are little grooves right in here. You see those little grooves? On the pump, they're these same grooves. So you want to line those up that lets you then push the pump in, and then now you'll just push it down all the way. Before I put everything back, I'm going to put some water in here. And I'm going to shut the hood, because remember if I try Checking it out with the hood open, it's not going to work. And there we go. I'm going to check the rear. There we go, coming out the rear. Now it's time just to put everything back together again. Simple as that. If I had taken it to the dealer, they would have charged me about $250. All right, on the fuel it has three settings, three different torque settings. Number one is lowest, then number two is a middle torque, and number three it'll get up to about 240 foot-pounds. Start on number one, that's all you want, because we're gonna to torque the wheels by hand. You don't wanna just lock them all in, uh, I've had um, mechanics at, even at the dealership, put tires on, they had it on a high setting, I couldn't get the tires off. 
Um, so do it right. These torque to 110 foot pounds. So that's what we're going to do. These should be torqued to 110 foot pounds. Do it in a star pattern. With the front wheels, the front wheels will naturally spin. This is a uh, two wheel drive, it's not a formatic, so they will turn all the time. So I dropped the car down and then I raised it just enough where the tire wasn't turning. I didn't want a lot of weight on the tire when I torqued it. So I just, I raised it back up again, just where I could do the 110 foot pounds. And we're done.